Hello, and welcome to Construction Scrum. My name is Felipe Engineer Manriquez. I am a registered Scrum trainer by Scrum Inc. And I am the host of the EBFC show, the easier, better, faster for construction podcast. I wrote this book so that you can have easier, better, and faster project delivery. With the help of Scrum Inc., I co-developed the registered Scrum Master for construction professionals and have since trained thousands of Scrum practitioners across the world. I serve as the Project Delivery Services Director for the Bull Company, and for over a decade, I've been implementing Lean and Scrum across construction projects in the United States and abroad. And I was recognized for contributions to the industry and received the Lean Construction Institute's Chairman's Award. As an improving Scrum team, we need to get to know one another so that we can work and learn together effectively. Using the comments in the video below, tell me what part of Scrum you want to learn more about. For example, you can ask, how do I set up new Scrum teams? Scrum has a history of transforming work. Are you working too hard? Join the people using Scrum to work easier, better, and faster while thriving in an ever-changing world. These are some of the books and resources that have influenced me. Take advantage of the worldwide cross-industry transformation experiences with these books, and let's connect on social media so that we can change the workplace for the better. Often I'm asked about construction scrum case studies. Who's using it? How is it being used? I share some of those on blog entries on the EBFC Show website. Go to the ebfcshow.com and click on blog where you can read more about these construction scrum case studies. One example is that a team that was working on a new hospital eliminated weekend and night work with the same staff while also completing the major hospital project upwards of over $50 million and simultaneously managing up to six on-campus billion-dollar projects from hundreds of thousands to over two million at the same time with the same staff. No extra people were needed. Another example is Scrum for pre-construction, or as we typically say, pre-con. This team eliminated weekend work and they tripled their productivity. You can use the QR code in the bottom right of this video or visit the ebfcshow.com forward slash blog to check out this case study and video for yourself. But now I'm going to let one of my favorite Scrum Masters, Brenda, tell us how they use Scrum in pre-construction. We're constantly working on multiple projects and different scopes of work. So in order for us to stay organized, we manage our work through Scrum. The Scrum Manual describes Scrum as a framework within which people can address complex, adaptive problems while productively and creatively delivering products of the highest value. We manage our work through one-week intervals. We have three main Scrum events. We start off with our Monday sprint planning sessions. During this session, we talk about what we can accomplish during the week. We look at milestones, we prioritize, and then we break down tasks required to meet those deliverables. This sets the expectations for the week and allows our team to get a clear understanding of what needs to get done. We also have a daily check-in every morning. This is a quick 15-minute meeting where everyone talks about what they were able to accomplish the day before and what they will be working on today. I moved to Friday now. It's done. My scope out is done. It's just now meeting with Larissa to tell her who we're going with after everybody's been scoped out. Okay, so that's got to be another tag up there then. Yeah. I mean, you have window treatment, tile, and casework, which is a lot. Cause I'm now, now I'm looking at your Friday, and then you have those three scope tags, and then follow up with Larissa. This allows our team to coordinate and align our efforts. Finally, on Friday, we have our retrospective meeting where we talk about how the week went and identify and select opportunities for improvement. We do this by creating a plus delta list where everyone can bring in new ideas or we can discuss hurdles we face and we'll get into the root cause of problems. Once we identify ways to improve, uh, we actively make sure those items are being addressed for next week's sprint. The biggest tool that we use is our Scrum board. All of our Scrum events tie back to this board. It's as simple as a to-do, doing, done list. We've gone through multiple variations of this board. And this board keeps evolving to meet our team's needs. The top outlines are milestones showing us what is priority. On the right side of our board, it lists out 
uh, what projects we're working on. So the colors match the big pre-con board. So it's easy for anyone in the office to see what projects we're working on. Going down the board, we have our current week's tags on the left side. And what we're currently working on is on the middle. And as we finish each tag, we move it to the right side. So the board flows from left to right. We create tags for all of our work, whether it's on a specific project, a personal project, or for training. If it takes longer than 15 minutes, we create a tag for it. We, there's lots of stickies being used. We create a tag for everything. Our tags have a velocity on the bottom right. In Scrum, velocity is measured in points per sprint, our sprint being a one week intervals and points based on human effort. So as a team, we talk about each task and decide collectively how many points each tag should have. We've collected data showing what our team can do. Knowing what is our capacity better allows us to plan for the future and create realistic milestone dates. Now our team knows what we can do and we have the data to show it. Besides these scrum tools, we have additional instruments we use to accomplish our work. Thank you so much, Brenda. I love the story. A couple of things that you didn't see in the video is that once this team tripled their productivity and their learning curve to get from what they were doing, working nights and weekends to eliminating that happened in a matter of months. The actual training where they learn what Scrum is, is happening just like you're experiencing it right now. In less than 30 minutes, you can understand what the framework is and immediately start to use it in your work or in your school studies or in your research. Scrum has so many applications for any type of project-based work or just work in general that needs to flow. Another example of Scrum and design and construction comes from my friend, Island. Island was an architect that came to my registered Scrum training, and within two days of becoming a Scrum master, she created a sprint board for her team working on an integrated project delivery school project in Canada. You can see on the left side, she's got backlog, which is her long-term planning, and she's got her short-term planning in sprint number one. And then in the to-do list, they've taken those items and then further decomposed it with Harry, Greg, Luke, and Scott. Because she understands that variation is going to happen. She's left space open for a buffer so that when things change, they can adapt their plan because they respect each other and the people that they are serving. She's tracking velocity for herself as a scrum master to understand if she's helping her team accelerate their pace without working harder, keeping their efforts level or identify areas to improve. On the left, I've got my buddy, Harry working for a general contractor in the Midwest, using Scrum for their pursuits. And you can see his Scrum board behind him in the warehouse area of their building. He said that once they started using the Scrum framework, they were instantly able to level the workload across members of his team so that no one person was doing more than the rest. They increased their hit rate of projects they were pursuing. And on the right, you see a superintendent using pool planning, a digital pool planning solution behind him uh, that program on the screen is touch plan, but they're using an analog scrum board solution to manage and remove constraints or bottlenecks. Another example on the left is an administrator working on a large healthcare project where she was able to implement scrum and become effective for multiple projects across the region, helping her team and other teams that were in need. Everyone has too much to do and often not enough people or time to do it. And when you implement things like Scrum and get twice the work done in half the time, you're able to more deeply serve and have flow in the work that you do. In the center, I've got my buddy, Brian Melcher, who's implemented Scrum across his entire organization, Field Verified. And the way that he got started was that he made his own personal Scrum board and rolled it out right there you see it into the middle of their shop so that everyone can see how he was changing his work. And people got curious. And in less than three months, every single person in his company had adopted Scrum. And they've since gone on to train multiple Scrum masters and have multiple teams. In his own words, Brian said that implementing this type of lean tactic has definitely and measurably impacted the revenue for their company and improved the already high engagement with his employees. On the right, I've got my buddy, Josh. He's a superintendent on a large multi-story research building in the middle of the country. They're using weekly work plans, last planner system production controls, TACT, and Scrum for meeting management. Over his shoulder, you can see a simple backlog to do, doing, and done list so that they can run multiple meetings. Why use Scrum in my industry? 
As a professional, I want to know why anyone will use Scrum at all so that I can figure out why my team should use it and why I should use it. The answer is complexity. Jeff Sutherland said, my mission is and has always been to share Scrum with the world and free people from the oppressive ways of working that have become entrenched. Today, more and more companies see the benefits of Agile and need people that both understand the mindset and can actually deliver results. There is the entire Scrum framework. Scrum is adaptive. The framework is scalable, like scaffolding, to meet the changing needs of your project delivery requirements. Use it to get closer to your work and modify it to support your work and what you're doing with your teams. The Agile Manifesto, signed in 2001 by people such as Jeff Sutherland and Ken Schwaber, the co-creators of Scrum, came up with four sets of values such as individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And you'll notice in the other three, we have bolded words on the left and unbolded words on the right. The people that came up with this manifesto recognize that the words in bold are more important and need to be a higher level of focus. Not to say that the unbolded text is not. In the construction industry, you might adapt this to your own type of thinking and taking that first value, we might say in construction, project-first thinking and working together across disciplines by focusing on a common goal for smooth project delivery. And for a working product, we might say, deliver design services or work in place in increments to drive alignment and gather feedback between the various stakeholders over exchanging documentation. For customer collaboration over contract negotiation, we could say, work with suppliers to owners to co-develop a solution based on mutually desired outcomes instead of just providing detailed requirements or status reports. And finally, Responding to change over following a plan, we could say, acknowledge that plans will change with the realities on the ground and drive to create plans with the best level of detail, accounting for the changing environment. And someone will always will ask, how many people are using Scrum in the construction industry, Felipe? And the answer is hundreds of companies are using Scrum every single day in the United States and abroad. And some of the thousands of construction professionals I've gotten to work with that have shared their scrum with me or that have allowed me to serve them, to onboard themselves and their teams are included with the company names on the right, which is a mix of general contractors, design firms, engineering companies, and even owner groups and more. And more companies since the slide was made are now doing it across the entire planet. If you are using scrum, please feel free to send me your scrum board, and I will add you to the graphic. As a scrum practitioner, I need to know the scrum framework so that I can adapt it to my work. If you want to learn more about the scrum guide and how it works for construction, check out chapter nine of my audiobook for free. You can watch it on YouTube there or check the show notes for a direct link to listen to it as a podcast. These are the major steps. I'm going to let one of my favorite product owners of all time Walk us through how does it work? Mr. Tom Bullock, take it away. Scrum is a simple framework to boost productivity and deliver products that will delight your customers. It does this by breaking the complex into smaller component parts. Teams then focus on tackling one piece at a time. After each incremental step, the team reevaluates what direction the product should take and what process is most efficient to accomplish that. Scrum allows you and your team to inspect and adapt your product, process, and plans more quickly. An easy way to remember all the key elements of Scrum is this, 3-5-3. Three, the first three represents the three roles in Scrum, the product owner, Scrum master, and the team. There are five meetings that we call events and three artifacts which are produced in or help guide these events. Here's how it works. All good products start with a goal and a vision of how to get there. That's what the product owner does in Scrum. They own the what, as in what the team is going to make. The product owner creates a prioritized to-do list of all the things which need to be done in order to finish the product. This is called the product backlog. Then the team that will do the work 
takes a look at that product backlog during sprint planning, the first event in Scrum. In that event, the team pulls in only the backlog items they believe they can finish in a set period of time, known as a sprint. This shorter to-do list is called the sprint backlog. Once that's ready, the actual sprint can begin. Sprints are the heartbeat of Scrum. This is when the actual work takes place. Each sprint lasts from one to four weeks. They're short by design. A sprint should be just long enough to allow the team to produce a meaningful working piece of the product that could be released to customers. We call this a potentially shippable product increment. But sprints should still be short enough that the product owner, scrum master, and team can change course if needed based on consumer or stakeholder feedback. Throughout the sprint, the Scrum Master coaches the team and product owner on Scrum. They also facilitate the events and support the team as needed. Every workday, the product owner, Scrum Master, and team gather for the daily Scrum. This event should take no more than 15 minutes, and everyone states what they did yesterday to make progress toward the sprint goal, what they will do today, and they note anything that is slowing them down or getting in their way. The next event in Scrum happens at the end of the sprint. It's called Sprint Review. At this event, the product owner makes sure the right customers or stakeholders are there to see the potentially shippable product increment demonstrated and give their feedback. The final event in Scrum is the Sprint Retrospective. This is where the team looks back on the process and the sprint as a whole and says what went well and what could have gone better. Plus, they agree on trying something in the next sprint that may boost production or make the process work better. And that's it. The basic 353 structure of Scrum. Thank you so very much, Tom. You always know how to break it down. So we have the entire framework there, as you saw in the video. Where do you start? You've got to start with the goal. So get ready, get something to write down, post a notes, pen, Sharpie markers, and write down what goal do you want to achieve this week? We're going to start your first five day sprint. Next, we're going to make the work visible. You write the goal down, put it in a prominent place. Also make a scrum board. You can start with something as basic as four columns, starting with the backlog on the left, a to-do list next, your doing column, and we're going to do one thing at a time, like right now we're making the scrum board, and the done column. That's going to be your face when you finish your first sprint five days from now. It's going to be all happy, happy, happy. Here are two project scrum board examples. On the left, we have an analog board, which is just sticky notes on a whiteboard, but you can use any surface whatsoever. And on the right, one of my favorites that I've been using since 2015 is Trello. It's a digital whiteboard with multimedia cards. And I will be sure to put a link in the description below so you can access that Trello board and all the examples that you see there. So we've made the work visible. We've got to start creating some tasks. Step three is to start small. One week or less, five days is one of the most common sprint durations of all time. In design and construction, we often see teams start with a monthly sprint or four weeks. It's very common. As you get better and practice more, you might iterate your way towards a smaller sprint cycle. You can't just start right away with a five-day cycle. Check your progress daily. If you want to learn more, visit constructionscrum.com and click on book links so that you can read the Scrum Guide online. Check the show notes and listen to my audio commentary of the Scrum Guide for construction professionals. Don't be completely traditional. Another example that I've written about in a blog called Agile Project Managers by Name versus Actual Practitioners share some of these traditional outcomes in construction. Three out of four construction projects are delivered late. Over 75% of projects are late for at least 40% of the construction phase. And three out of four projects are delivered over budget. Over 90% of construction projects finish with cost overruns in excess of 30%. Thank you so much for watching. Let's stay connected. Connect with me on social media at thefelipe.bio.link so that you can ask me questions or just put your questions in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help you get started with your very first sprint. 
Like my mentor, Dr. Jeff Sutherland says, just get started. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit that subscribe button so you never miss any new content like this. Also, tap that like button to show your appreciation. Don't forget to leave me comments and questions, and I look forward to seeing you get started with Scrum today.